everybody, welcome to my channel. My name is Becca De La Flans, and this is my YouTube channel where I talk about all the houseplant things. Today, we are doing something very special. We are going to be showing every single plant in my collection. There are a lot of them. As you can see, this video is like two hours long. So stick with me. We're gonna have a lot of fun chatting about every single plant in my collection. I have a couple of different zones throughout the house. I have this big plant room. I have my kitchen. I have another bedroom. And then I have some more stuff just sort of sprinkled around the house and outside. If you're not already, make sure that you subscribe to my channel so that you can see weekly updates about these plants and how I'm caring for such a large collection. And without further ado, let's get into it. So we are going to start off in my plant room where I have probably 90% of my collection. This room, just as an overview, it has a wall of south windows. We have western exposure through these, although not much light actually comes through here because we do have a big tree outside, which you can kind of see up there. And then we have another little window up high and two skylights which probably produce a lot of the light for this area but a majority of the light is coming in from these south windows we're going to start with my aglionema silver bay also known as a chinese evergreen and this is one of those plants that is genuinely such a beautiful staple plant to have in your collection as you can see it has lots of new growth coming out we've got a leaf here we've got a leaf over here that is brand new you can tell by the lighter green color and then a few other spots also have new growth right here you can see a little leaf spike anyway i've had this plant for a couple of years now i bought it when i moved into this house and the reason that i got it was because i had this plant previously and it just didn't make it i think maybe moving a lot really did it in but I was super happy to replace it. I feel like this is a staple plant that everybody should have just because these leaves are so incredibly beautiful. They have so much detail on them when you look extra close. And they're just a really beautiful green foliage spot in a room that doesn't require too much effort. So I just have this by the door. I don't even think about it, honestly. When I'm watering all of my other plants, I finally remember to water this one, but I generally don't have to do much to take care of it besides watering it every couple of weeks and putting it in a pretty neutral spot. I've got this three tier or really four tier shelf. I got this from Target, the Magnolia Home Collection a couple years ago, and it's been so cute to have little plants on here and it just fills up this space so nicely. So down here I have a Hoya Callistophylla. This Hoya is so beautiful. It is honestly one of my favorite Hoyas and even more exciting because it has some blooms coming out. So we've got this bloom and then we have another one right there, which is forming. Sometimes it'll bloom at the same time from those two spots and it's really cool to look at, but generally this plant is much more noted for its foliage. It kind of looks like a crocodile, I think. I don't know, it's just a little bit veiny. I really like veiny Hoyas. So this one is definitely a treasure. This pot is from, um, gosh, I don't remember. I'm gonna put the name of all of the pots where they're from if I have the source. I do have a source on this one, so it should be on the screen. But yeah, it's really easy, it's really lovely. It hasn't done a ton for me though. So hopefully it will put some effort into leaves and not blooms, but I can't complain. Hoya blooms are beautiful and I'll take a bloom if it wants to give me a bloom. <laughs> Up here, I have a Hoya Australis Lisa. It's very small and it has always been very small. For some reason, it's just not growing for me. <laughs> I feel like maybe if I put it in a bigger pot, it would do a little bit better, but we did get this new leaf rather recently. And then after that one, we've got this one, which is still kind of growing in. Not too exciting, but it's cute. And it's a sweet little plant to put in that section there. And then right above that, we have my philodendron squamiferum. It's really, really beautiful. It has these fuzzy petioles. And I personally am just like such a fan of fuzzy petioles. I think they're so interesting to look at. 
especially when they are brand new fuzzy petioles, they are like super soft and um, I love touching them. <laughs> so it's put out quite a few new leaves in this spot, so I'd say it is pretty happy. It is definitely outgrown this spot though, and I need to get it like on a pole and put it somewhere else. Probably we'll be moving this out to the greenhouse because I just don't know if I'm gonna have space for it unless it was sitting in this spot in my house. So on top of that, I have a Pilea peperomioides, which is an awesome plant. It is so easy. It's just one of those simple plants, like very similar to the Agathonema silver bay. It just chills and I really appreciate that about it. And funnily enough, it does put out pups. If you're familiar with this plant, they put out pups. They reproduce by just um, putting up like a another plant out of the soil. Sometimes they'll also grow them off of the stem. But this is a pup that has grown out of the side of the pot. There's like an opening right here and it has found its way through. So this is my addition to the life finds a way sentiment from Jurassic Park. <laughs> Life definitely finds a way and it loves this spot up here. It's been so beautiful like kind of full round plant reaching around for the light because it has a light source here and a light source with that skylight so it's pretty well rounded and it looks so beautiful up here. Okay we're coming back down to the ground and we have my begonia trellis situation. So I made this trellis, or I installed this trellis on a video a while ago, and my inspiration for it was to have an area for all of my begonia to be together and climb. And I'm, I just have loved the way that it turned out. It's so cute, and I think that it matches the aesthetic of the room pretty well. So they kind of blend together a lot, so I'm gonna try to show you <laughs> only the Hoya that I'm, not the Hoya, only the begonia that I'm talking about. Oh my gosh, also, <laughs> this just scared me. There's a daddy long leg spider living on this one, which is funny because this was outside overnight because I watered it. Whenever I water this, I just pick up the entire thing and I bring it outside. I have a hose right out here and we must have brought in a traveler. So I'm gonna put that back outside. <laughs> Unless it can find bugs to eat in here, we'll just have to see. Oh, we're getting some movement. Okay, back on track. This is a Begonia Benigo pink. Probably saying that wrong, and I guess now is a good time to tell you that I'm probably gonna say certain plant names wrong. That's okay, it's normal. A lot of these plants have funny names. But anyway, this Begonia has really beautiful pinkish leaves, but a lot of these have actually just been more green than anything, and I think it's probably because it's not getting super high light, but I'm totally fine with that. What I really love about begonias is the polka dot leaves, and so as long as we've got that, I'm pretty happy, and we have this plant right here, which is more in the realm of the pink. So this is a begonia Miss Mummy. It's an angel wing begonia. All of these are cane begonias, which is the only type of begonia that I like. I just tend to like this one so much more and find it very easy. So if you are wanting to try out begonias, definitely look into cane begonias. There's so many different kinds, um, especially like angel wing begonias are really beautiful. So anyway, this is the Miss Mummy, like I said. It is so lovely. It has really beautiful pink leaves, like almost like a purplish pink. It's one of those plants that will face the light. And I was kind of interested to see what it would do sitting in this planter situation where the light is behind it. And we do have some leaves that are facing upwards and to the light, but for the most part, this is one that has started to grow um, up this trellis and it's not attaching by any means. It's not a plant that would do that, but it is nice just to have something to lean it against because it is so tall and lanky. Like these are not super strong branches. So it's nice to have something for it to just lean against and it's pretty happy just doing that. So this is actually two plants planted together and it looks 
so lovely. I just absolutely love this begonia mist mummy. And then tucked away a little bit under here, we have my begonia lucerna, which was actually my first begonia. I got this from one of my plant friends that I had in Tucson, and it was a cutting off of a friend's really, really old plant. And, you know, she's been going through it. <laughs> Ever since I moved here, we've been in quite the transition period, but I think that she's finally coming out of that and putting in um, some work to put out some really beautiful leaves that look a lot like they did before we moved. So this is an example of that, and so are these, honestly. The leaves are like a nice green, kind of glossy vibe, and they're very kind of like flat and thin, whereas these ones are, feel a little bit more crinkly. These ones feel very flat, and I really enjoy that. I think it's so beautiful, and I'm super happy that it is doing better, although it is kind of hidden underneath other um, my other begonias that are sort of bigger and happier. Um, it is growing up and it's looking really nice putting out some new beautiful growth. Okay, so this right here is my Monstera adansonii tree, I've come to call it. A lot of people have tried to tell me that it is a Monstera something else. It's an Adansonii, I can assure you. <laughs> I'm pretty confident in that. The only difference with this one is it has been grown on a pole for its entire life. And it was not me that did this. I purchased this plant from a local nursery um, on their 50% off day. So it was originally, I think, $400 and I got it for $200. And I was actually really surprised that they included it in the sale just because it was like so big and beautiful and lush. And I picked a great day to film because she is just looking amazing. <laughs> so we've got some really big, beautiful leaves in the mix. And then we've also got some, you know, smaller leaves, but have really big fenestrations. These holes are called fenestrations. Um, it's just really cool to see the variety of leaves that it has put out. And then of course, as the plant has outgrown its pole, you can see there, that is the top of the pole and it outgrew it and I have no interest in making it any taller than it currently is because as it stands, it's probably eight or nine feet tall. It's definitely taller than like a standard door. So that is really, really difficult to move. So I've just sort of let it move and cascade back down. And as a result, we have lots of runners and small leaves. Definitely not as impressive as those big leaves, but it's just not something that is feasible to keep <laughs> letting it grow even taller because I just don't have the capacity to do that. I have considered moving this out to the greenhouse whenever that is done, but we will just have to see. I kind of really like having it in this room, but at the same time, I feel like it would thrive in the greenhouse. It's definitely a plant that I will consider <laughs> bringing out there. Next up, we have one of my OG plants. This is a Albo Syngonium. It is so beautiful and it's actually wild because this is all regrowth from cutting the plant. I just sort of deadheaded everything off of it because the growth was getting really stringy, the plant was getting really tall, and it just wasn't looking how I wanted it to look. So I just deadheaded it and hoped for the best. We have had lots of success with regrowth. A lot of the leaves are really beautifully modeled variegation. This one is probably one of my favorites. I just love the way that that looks with this light green color. Anytime one of my variegated plants puts out this light green color, I just fangirl because I think it's so beautiful. But of course, a leaf like this will also always have my heart. It is so lovely. And I love that this plant has such a variety. We have leaves that are mostly green with a little bit of variegation. We have leaves that are mostly variegated. So I I really love this plant and I'm glad that I was able to give it sort of a second life with that deadheading and reboot that it did. Um, but yeah, it's really beautiful. It's really happy. And I am actually considering putting this on a pole or like a, a wood plank to see if it will start climbing and maybe getting those tri-leaf uh, syngonium leaves that they're known for. Okay, just on the other side of the door, I have this silver sword, this philodendron silver sword. This is a plant that I, when I first bought it, I was so stoked about it, but I have slowly lost interest. I don't know how much longer this is going to be a part of my collection, 
but it did make the video, so that's exciting. <laughs> it recently overcame spider mites, so we have some funny leaves going on here. If you ever notice that your leaves are coming out sort of crinkly and just like not how they're supposed to come out, I knew that the leaves were supposed to look like this, and then it put out one that looked like this, and I was like, uh-oh, something is not right. <laughs> so I immediately knew that there was something wrong, and I checked it, and it had spider mites. But anyway, it's on a plank right now, and the growth points or the roots are like down here so we've got a bit of time before it'll outgrow this plank and i don't know if i'm gonna like again i don't know if i'm gonna see it to the end it is a really lovely plant in that the color is so unique and it definitely needs to be dusted i think if i had maybe dusted it and gave it some tlc i might feel differently about it but just generally the way that it looks it's just not appealing to me i don't really like this situation so we'll see if i can do something to fix it up to be something that i like more if not i will probably be rehoming it <laughs> okay so next we have the star of the show and my whole heart this is my phytonia also known as the nerve plant and this is one of those plants that is heavily debated as one of the worst house plants ever and every single time this debate comes up i am a phytonia stan like i literally cannot do anything besides stan the Fetonia. <laughs> it is by far my favorite house plant. It is so easy to take care of. I find it so simple. Really probably the most vocal house plant out there. It'll tell you exactly what it wants and you know when it needs water. I just really love that. This plant really taught me how to listen to a plant's cues and now I'm even able to detect that it needs water before it even starts to flop because this plant is notorious for flopping. It's very dramatic. So whenever it is thirsty, it just sort of lays down and, and it looks dead. It sort of convinces you that it's died. And I think that's why a lot of people don't like it because they're so dramatic, but that is the very reason why I. I do like it <laughs> because she tells me what she wants and I really appreciate that. So anyway, this was purchased as a 10 inch plant from Walmart actually. It was really big at the time, like 10 inches is a pretty big pot of Fetonia. So I knew that I wanted to do something special for it. One of my favorite pottery companies is Terra Vida and they actually made me this pot just for this Fetonia. It's like so big that it's basically a mixing bowl. Love this design they did. I asked for this specific design and I asked for, I think a 12 inch diameter. And then they had to make it probably also around eight to 10 inches tall, which I was a little bit concerned about at first because I wasn't sure if the plant would do okay with that because the root system probably only goes down to about here. It has a very shallow root system. This is actually a ground cover plant in nature if you're ever in like a botanical garden in a tropical botanical garden look down and you'll probably see this on the ground <laughs> so i really like to grow it as ground cover so i wanted it to have a very open and flat area to grow on top of and you can see that it's even started to outgrow the width of the pot and it's still growing pretty flat because it's getting a ton of light so if this plant isn't getting enough light it will get pretty leggy and start to grow up but because it's getting a lot of southern exposure and also exposure from the skylights, it has stayed relatively flat. So it looks very beautiful and I feel very proud that I've been able to grow it at least similar, mostly similar to what it would be experiencing in the natural world. And she is just the centerpiece of this entire room, as you can see, and she deserves it. My favorite plant deserves the center spot. <laughs> Another furniture piece that is just iconic in my channel, in my life, in my home, is this arch cane shelf and i got this for like 30 bucks from someone off of facebook marketplace when i was living in tucson and i don't think that they quite understood how valuable these things are they sold it to me for pretty cheap because the bottom like their dog chewed on it or something as you can see down there there's a bunch of stuff underneath it so sorry <laughs> It's a little cluttered. I haven't changed out the plants in a long time, but it's really great for my smaller pots. And sometimes I'll switch out the plants from here and this shelf, but it has been like this for a really long time. So we're gonna go through each individual plant here. This is a philodendron Florida, and I originally bought it because I thought that it was a Florida ghost, and it's definitely not a Florida ghost. <laughs> harsh reality there but i kind of i've kind of hated this plant for the entire time i've had it but recently i've been just sort of leaving it on the shelf and letting it live its life and it's turned into a plant that i really quite enjoy 
having in the background. So it has sort of grown like kind of wonky and maybe that's why I quite enjoy it. But I really like the leaf shape and just the consistency of having this greenery in the background without really having to worry about it too much. So it's in a Terra Vita pot that is so cute. I love that pot and I love this plant. Next up, we have my philodendron Adaba Puens. It's sitting on top of a collection of vintage houseplant books or just vintage books in general. They're just really beautiful to sort of elevate a plant. So again, this is my philodendron Adaba Puens. I absolutely love the grayish hue to this green leaf. And then it just is a showstopper with the back of the leaf being nice and red. It's so beautiful. This pot is from Oh gosh, I think it's like hands-on ceramics or something like that. Again, I'll have it on the screen. It's a climbing philodendron, and so it will be needing a plank of some sort soon. I have kept it in this spot because it was just sort of growing like this, and it was very beautiful. But this new leaf came out, and usually the leaves sort of drop to be more like this, but this one hasn't done it yet. And so I needed to move the plant out because it was getting too tall because this new leaf is gonna come out, which is so exciting. For a long time, it didn't really do anything in my collection. And then now once it started going, it really hasn't stopped, which is just the most exciting thing. I love this plant, especially love the plant pot combination. I feel like it is just like such a hit. Okay, here's a funny little plant that I am actually really surprised is still alive, but this is an Alocasia stingray and it's known for its little tail. You can see it has that little stingray tail and I just think that it is so cute. I would love for this plant to get really big and I'm considering bringing this out to the greenhouse because I just wanna see it get big. <laughs> It does have a new leaf here and oh, I just watered and you can see that it had some like extra water um, Come out on the leaf, which is kind of funny when that happens. Anyway um, Sometimes after you water you'll notice like water drops on the tips of your leaves. It's totally normal. Not a big deal but it's potted in this really beautiful pot by Joanna Hennigan and I thought that it was just so beautiful. Usually it does the thing where when it puts out a new leaf, it'll drop an old leaf, but we are holding on to three leaves pretty confidently here. So I think that it's good for now, but it definitely needs more light than it's getting but I just um, don't really want to give it a better spot because the good light real estate is being taken up by plants that I like a lot more, so. <laughs> okay, next up we've got my Philodendron Gloriosum. I just repotted it in this pot. It's a, I think this is like an eight inch pot and it's like four inches tall, so it's very, short and stout and exactly what this plant needs. So Gloriosum are um, crawlers, so they're gonna crawl across the floor and so they need a shallow living situation. So this is actually two different plants that I have in here and I'll be the first to say that I don't have the most um, impressive Gloriosum out there. I definitely see people that have much more beautiful versions of this plant, <laughs> but I do look onto this plant very lovingly because half of it was given to me by a friend and half of it I purchased from my favorite online plant store, Tennessee Tropicals. And for some reason, they've both just stayed very small. I think maybe if I moved them, they might be happier, maybe with more sun. I'm not entirely sure, but when I repotted, we did lose quite a few leaves. There used to be many more leaves, but it's growing pains. It's okay, it's relatively normal. We do have like three leaves coming out at once off of this plant here and two leaves coming out at once off of this plant here, which is sort of a funny thing. I've never really seen a house plant put out multiple leaves at once off of the same stem. Very interesting. <laughs> Underneath that, we have my string of turtles, which I really don't wanna spend a lot of time on because this is one of my least favorite plants in my collection. It's really ugly, it's really weird, but somehow it is still alive, so I've kept it. I, I don't know. <laughs> It's just goofy. But above that, we have my book, Houseplants for Beginners. If you're ever interested in a houseplant book, this is one that I wrote. It is a lot of really great information, succinct and specific to houseplants. There's a Houseplant 101 section where I go through everything from buying plants, where to put them in your home, and I even give care instructions for over 100 plants in the back of the book. It is organized by easy, medium, and hard plants, and it's a really great book. It's available and hardback and a soft cover. I'll link a few places down below where you can purchase the book. Okay, so now we have 
my Philodendron Florida Ghost, the actual Florida Ghost. So you can see it has some like really beautiful modeling on this leaf. The more recent leaves haven't exactly done that. I don't really know what's going on with this plant. Like it's kind of all over the place with growth. I just sort of ignore it, to be honest. It's not one of those plants that I spend a lot of time doting over. So it just kind of does what it does and I let it you know, I don't know. Not all of my plants get my full undivided attention. This is definitely one of those that is just taking up space and I'm glad for it too. But yeah, it's a, it's a Philadelphia Florida ghost. <laughs> okay, this next plant is actually a fake string of pearls. It was a crocheted plant by my friend Natalie. She has her Instagram written on the bottom. So if you're interested in checking out her work, you can look. Um, she is actually going to be teaching a class to my patrons on how to do this. So if you are around this weekend, that is going to be on the 25th, this Sunday, if you're watching this in real time, September 25th, we are getting together on Zoom. So if you want to join my Patreon, you can have access to that class. I will have my Patreon link down below. It is for the $5 tier and up. So yeah, definitely come check it out if you're interested. But next to that, I have an Adansonii, which I've had for a super long time. I also got this plant from a friend. And it's one of those plants where again, similar to the Florida, it's just here and it's beautiful. It's doing its thing. And I don't think about it really ever. Sometimes it puts out a new leaf and that's exciting, but most of the time I'm just glad to have it in the background. I think it's really cool. I love the fenestrations on it. I think this is the wide form Adansonii. I'm not exactly sure, but yeah, it's cute and I like it. And it's in this pot by Concrete Botanicals and it's sitting on top of another vintage houseplant book, of course, with a saucer so that I can protect the book. <laughs> okay, next to that, I have a Peperomia watermelon and this is such a cool plant. I really, really love this Peperomia. It's probably my favorite Peperomia just because I love the way that these leaves look. They're so like succulent-esque and I just think it's so striking. It's very beautiful. I love that all of the growth comes out from like that central point and just kind of like puffs up. And it is also a sort of ground cover plant. So it does tend to grow kind of low and I really love it. This is also in a pot by Terra Vida. And now we move on to this whole section down here. I'm gonna do this bottom bench first and then we're going to look at the wall. This is my Gapertia orbifolia, also previously known as the Calathea orbifolia. Lots of Calatheas were reclassified as Gapertia and I do my best to call it a Gapertia, but most people know this as a Calathea, so just so everybody knows what's going on there. Anyway, I actually got this from Home Depot a couple months ago. I honestly cannot handle having like more than one of these because it's just too much work for me. And this situation is a really nice spot for it because this is probably the lowest light situation in this room. It's in this corner. It's furthest away from the south window. So because of that, I do have a grow light over here that I'm definitely going to be using. This is from Mother. I'm going to be using it more so in the winter time when it is much darker in this room. But this summer I haven't needed it as much, but it does make a big impact in this corner because like I said, it does get pretty dark over here. This plant was my number one wish list plant. New leaves come out looking like little taquitos and I just think that's so cute. And I feel kind of proud that there's actually a new leaf coming out while I'm filming this because it is proof that like, I kind of know what I'm doing with this plant. <laughs> and it's sitting in this pot that's sort of like a stand in itself. This was actually gifted to me by a friend. I think she got it at like Marshalls or Home Goods or something like that. And I actually did break the pot, but I fixed it with some E6000 and put it back together. And you wouldn't even know. It's great. <laughs> okay, down here, this very impeding plant taking up a lot of space here is an Anthurium balloenum. And it is definitely one of my favorite Anthurium in my collection. Don't mind this whole mess here. I've got some extra planks. I've got the wreath that I'm gonna put on my greenhouse. It's all a mess. <laughs> but anyway, this leaf is very, very big and it's usually the one that I like to showcase when I talk about this plant because it's so impressive. But we also have, you know, this is another beautiful leaf that we can't forget about. Um, anyway, so I got this plant actually in a giveaway a couple years ago on Instagram 
and it has been just such a cool anthurium. This plant was actually the reason that I got a humidifier when I was living in my old apartment because I was so stressed out that my Tucson apartment would be too dry for it. And it definitely was because now that I'm living here, it's putting out growth, like much bigger growth, much more rapid growth, and it is just so much happier here. So it also did get spider mites recently. And so we did lose like a couple of leaves. As you can see, it has a really long stem here. Um, so we did lose maybe like two or three leaves because of that, but she has recovered and I definitely make sure to keep her, you know, in a place where she's not touching a lot of other plants, although she is currently touching this linearis, which I don't particularly love. I might move things around so that it's not touching other plants. I really do my best to make sure that my plants don't touch each other because that is one of the best ways to prevent pests from, you know, getting all over everything. So you'll see that everything is pretty spaced out and at least the leaves are not touching each other. Of course, we're gonna have situations up here where that's a lot harder, but I do try my best <laughs> to not have things touch. Anyway, it's been a great plant for me and I do need to repot it before the season ends. Another anthurium right here, this is my anthurium regale, and this plant has been the worst plant I have had in a really long time. Like truly, I look at this plant and I feel nothing. I hate this plant. <laughs> but I keep it because it's beautiful. It is very beautiful. I love, love regale leaves, but it is probably, and I've heard this from other people too, it's probably one of the most difficult anthurium to keep happy. Ever since I got this plant, it has been a one leaf wonder. It has never put out more than one leaf at a time. And the only reason it has ever put out a new leaf is because I chopped off the leaf that it currently had. So it just will have this, this little thing right here, and it won't do anything. But if I cut this off, it will put out a new leaf. I don't know why. It just doesn't like having more than one leaf, which I guess is fine, but it was taking up precious real estate in my Ikea greenhouse cabinet. And recently I just decided that I don't care about this plant anyway. It doesn't like anything I do anyway. So let's just bring it out and put it on the bench here and see what it does. And it has looked exactly the same as it did in the cabinet. So I'd say it was a good move to you know, have room for other stuff in the cabinet that will actually thrive in there. So don't really have much positive to say about this plant besides it's here. <laughs> And by the way, I realized I didn't explain like what this is. So this is the Ikea Besta unit. It's two of them. I have the really long one and then the short one. And I did have to cut it, the short one. I had to trim it a little bit, like maybe like two inches. Yeah, it's been really great. I have plant storage underneath here and it's been a really awesome place for me to put plants so that they can be off of the ground. And I would highly recommend it if you want to sort of put it against a wall and have it disappear into the wall. It's been really great. I honestly don't even notice that it's there half the time because it just is a great spot to hold the plants, but it doesn't take any attention otherwise. Okay, here is a recent wishlist plant acquisition. This is a philodendron 69686. I first saw one of these at Flower Farm in Kansas, and ever since then, I have been trying to find one, hopefully for a good price, and I did. I got this for, I think it was around 70 to $80 from Plants and Pamperin on Instagram. It was one of their Instagram story sales, and I am so impressed with this plant. Like, it is so big and beautiful, and it came rooted on a little paint stick. And, oh, I think it's actually, oh no, no, the front here is rooted on the paint stick. Down there, you can see. Um, and probably when it's time to put it on a plank, like a bigger plank, I will just put the plank like next to it, like next to this, because I was sort of worried about removing this, if that would affect the plant. And honestly, I don't think it would, because it's only rooted in one small spot down there. But I could very easily just put on another plank and just add on to this situation. But anyway, it does have a new leaf coming out, which is going to be so cute. These leaves are very unique. And like, honestly, they remind me of aliens. I think that is the reason why I was attracted to this plant because it's so unique. It's kind of like the philodendron Florida, but just like way funkier. And I just really love that. So it sits here on this little wicker throne so that it can be a little bit taller and it's lovely. This plant here is an El Choco Red, Philodendron El Choco Red, and it is so cool. I got this plant from another seller on Instagram. I'll have their name on the screen, and I absolutely love this plant. It definitely needs to be dusted, I'm realizing <laughs> right now, but we have a new leaf coming in here. You can see it's like 
pink right there. And I think that this plant is just going to become more and more impressive as it gets bigger. Clearly right now it's not super exciting. El Chocos have really beautiful red undersides and so far this is the only leaf that has it, but I am confident that the rest will also follow suit in that. But yeah, that's all I have to say about this one. She's cute and she's doing her best right now. This is my Syngonium Frosted Heart, which is probably one of my most underrated plants. I bought this a couple months ago, like actually it might've even been close to a year ago from Rolling Ridge in St. Louis. And these leaves are so cool. Like I really think that this plant is so underrated. I feel like more people need to get this plant. It's a Syngonium and these leaves are beautiful heart shapes. They have a beautiful silvery look to them, that pale green, like I said, I love it. And I have it growing on this plank here and it has been so, so happy. Like I honestly feel like this plant is going to be such a showstopper as it gets bigger and bigger. It has stayed super bushy and tight, which I really, really love and appreciate about this plant. I love when plants look bushy. I really don't like when they're stringy. And so this plant just gets like 10 points in my book for being just like such a star and looking so good and full even after it has grown like this whole next level of leaves it still looks so good sometimes i get questions about whether this ladder is actually functional and yes it is i use it all the time to get up to these plants at the top here and it's beautiful in addition to being functional <laughs> Okay, don't need to spend too much time here, but this is a Monstera Deliciosa that I grew from seed a couple years ago. It should be a lot bigger than it is, and I think I should leave it at that. I mean, I put it on this plank, and after I did that, it put out this beautiful leaf, and that's really exciting. But other than that, I keep it mostly for the sentiment of knowing that I grew it from seed, but it's not that exciting besides that. So let's move on to something more exciting, which is this. <laughs> this is my philodendron Billy TA, and I got this from my friend Adam, also known as Not Dude on YouTube, and it was just this leaf here alone, and it was a mid-cut, so it did put out another leaf pretty quickly, and it's this leaf, so it was much smaller, but as it has grown, it has put out a bigger leaf each time. So the latest leaf it put out was this one, and I just love this long, beautiful leaf. Lance-shaped leaves are truly some of my favorite. I just think they are so freaking cool. And it's only up from here. Like, I think that these leaves are just gonna get bigger and bigger. I do anticipate the next leaf being either this size or maybe even slightly bigger, but it starts off as a little spike right here and then it will put out a new leaf. And someone told me that these grow in a rosette pattern upwards. So I'm super excited to see how it will grow and change as it gets bigger. Okay, next up we have my Monstera Thai Constellation. Now this plant is truly a showstopper. These two leaves here, these sisters have just revolutionized my life. Like this is definitely another favorite plant, especially because of these two leaves. They are so beautiful. I have it growing on a plank, as you can see, and ever since it has been put on this plank, we've got these two leaves that are amazing. <laughs> Let me show you some of the other leaves because they're just tucked up underneath here. So we've got probably the oldest leaf on the plant. Oh, the oldest leaf on the plant is probably this one which is very impressive. And then it put out, oh wait, no, you know what? This is probably the oldest leaf on the plant. I was wondering, yeah, this is a smaller leaf. That's the oldest. Then we got a little bit of this. You know, you can see it's nice and creamy and green. We've got this one, which has really nice variegation. And then we've got this one, which was like, truly like, looks like a starry night. It's so beautiful. Um, and I really do love when they have like those big creamy margins, but it does make me a little nervous because I know that they're not going to age well. They will eventually turn brown, um, which is why I'm glad when I get a leaf like this because it sort of balances the plant. And next to that, I have my Albo Monstera, which is just another gorgeous variegated Monstera. It has lots of different leaves going on. As you can see, this one has had a long history of putting out big variegated sections that don't last very long and that's fine it just makes me a little sad <laughs> this leaf feels really nice 
and we've got that leaf which was also really nice sorry they, they kind of blend together i have them right next to each other they sort of blend together but um this one is a more recent leaf and then we have the newest leaf which is still sort of hardening off is this one and it's gorgeous so i love that each leaf is unique but the, my favorite leaf probably it's ever put out is this one because of this really lovely green section here. And it's just really nicely modeled throughout the entire plant. It's very lovely. I also have this growing on a plank and I have cut up this plant before and given it to a friend, which that part, where was that? Oh, that was down here. I cut it and gave it to a friend and I kind of want to cut it again, maybe here and see if I can propagate it again and then plant it back into the pot because these older leaves are on their way out soon. They've done their work. They have been very faithful servants to the plant, but it's probably time for them to go pretty soon. And I don't want the bottom of the plant looking bare. So we're gonna see what we can do to help her out in that. This is a Philodendron Glorious, which is a mix of the Melanochrysum and the Gloriosum. This leaf right here is very, very Gloriosum-esque. She is looking like her father, okay? And you can see this specifically looks very Gloriosum. I'm assuming that Melanochrysum was the mother. I don't know why, but that's just my assessment, okay? So it has been growing on a plank for a little while. You can see these leaves at the bottom were very, very small. And there was a moment when it attached to the wood plank, but then it it got broken off. Somebody pulled it off on accident. I don't know who. It was me. <laughs> anyway, these leaves were all, um, this leaf, this leaf, and this leaf were all put out in the greenhouse cabinet. And I was just noticing that they were looking a little bit rough in there. For some reason, it was tearing, even though it was getting a lot of humidity. I just felt like it, it needed to be removed from the greenhouse cabinet. And when I did that, I got this. And I just feel like she outgrew the cabinet and she was ready for something new. And we have this really beautiful leaf coming out, which is super exciting. I wonder how big it's going to be. I think it's gonna be really beautiful and I'm excited to see how big it's going to be because I think it's gonna be a biggie, but we'll just have to see. My camera keeps wanting to focus on the Thai constellation. Trust me, me too, honey, but we got work to do here. <laughs> Okay, we've got a droopy friend here. I did water it yesterday, but I think it's just like, I don't know what's going on. Anyway, <laughs> this is a Caladium lendenii, and I got this on Etsy after I saw that it was a trending tropical. I was like very intrigued by it, and I decided to try it out. I've never had a Caladium before, but I was interested, and it has proven to be an interesting plant to have, let's say. How many times can I say interesting? Um, it's proven to be a fun plant, but it has given me a run for my money a few times. It came with a lot of leaves, and now we're down to one and a half. We do have a new leaf coming out. It's on the way, but this plant got spider mites, and it did not look good for a little while there. So spider mites was just sort of like running its course in this corner over here, and I didn't catch it for a little bit, so that's why you're hearing about some plants that had spider mite damage, and they lost leaves as a result. So she's sort of rebuilding her kingdom after she was ravaged by spider mites. And I do believe in her because she put out this really beautiful leaf and we've got another one, as I said, so. Okay, we have another Alba Monstera and there's sort of like a tangle of branches over here. So it's kind of confusing to see what's what, but this is the newest leaf off of this Alba Monstera. This plant was actually given to me by a friend as a single leaf. You can see this leaf down here. There she is. And it has put out this whole plant as a result, which is really fun. So we've got stuff like this, we've got stuff like this, and it's on a plank. So I just recently put it on a plank. I hope that it enjoys it and puts out leaves at a more rapid rate. I also gave it like pretty high dollar real estate being so close to this south window. Hopefully she uses it. I really hope she does, but we will just have to see. Okay, this is a variegated Epipremnum pinnatum. It very quickly outgrew its pole. I would say that these are like pretty rigorous growers and I was not expecting that. So the leaves are like very long and skinny and the variegation on mine is not great, I'll be honest. I wish that it was better, but down here you can see more variegation and you can also see that the leaves were much rounder but as it started growing um, the leaves got skinnier and skinnier 
at least for a few of them. Like this one's definitely like a random more round leaf, um, but they also have like tiny little fenestrations, which I think is super cute. I need to get this on like a very long pole and I think it'll be happy, but as you can see, it outgrew the pole and then this leaf passed away. So <laughs> it was gonna be a really small one anyway, so I'm not too upset about it, but I'll probably like cut that right there and then let it branch. So yeah. Super cute. Okay, we have now the Anthurium King, the Anthurium vicii, which is just a beautiful plant. Really, really calls your attention with these ripples. He's got abs, I mean, that's great. <laughs> We, we love a guy with like a 24 pack, amazing. So anyway, I got this from a local friend in Tucson a couple of years ago, and I also recently updated about this one in a haul update video, so I'll have that linked down below if you're interested. But basically, this is the easiest anthurium in my opinion. If you're looking for an anthurium that is easy to care for, really similar to a Monstera Deliciosa, I would suggest this one. If you're wanting to dip your toes in and just learn a little bit and try out Anthurium, this is a good one. It is getting prime real estate in the south window and it is making good use of it because we have a new leaf that will be coming out relatively soon. Whenever it's ready to put out a new leaf, this little thing gets kind of like it gets bigger and then soon enough we have the leaf spike coming out, which is really exciting. So hopefully in the next couple weeks that will happen. Behind that plant on the world's tallest plank, we have my Philodendron Splendid, which these leaves are like waiting for their prints to come, looking out the window, but they are so beautiful. Look at them. They are huge. I absolutely love it. This is like genuinely another one of my favorite plants. I think I've said that only about three plants so far. I usually say it about every plant, but they're really now there are definitely plants that are my favorites and plants where I'm like, eh, this is one of those that I'm like, yeah, I'm a ride or die for this plant. When I put it on the plank, I noticed that the leaves, as I hoped, started getting much bigger. The leaves down here without a plank were this big. Okay, the leaves now that it's been on a plank for a long time are this big. I can't reach it even, it's like so tall. I put it on this plank because I was not expecting it to live on it for very long. Like I was planning on taking it off and like trimming the plank, but then it just started taking off and I was like, oh, well, let's, I guess, give it a chance. So you can see it is a cross between the Melanochrysum and the Varicosum, and it is probably one of my favorite hybrids because you can just see how beautiful its its father is, the Varicosum, and how beautiful its mother is, the Melanochrysum. And it lives on in this plant in the most beautiful way. I think it's absolutely lovely. I am in the process of air layering it because I would like to cut it from this point up and let that grow up this pole and see how big the leaves can get because I've really seen people have huge versions of this. So I'm really excited to see what it'll look like eventually, but we have a bunch of, well, at least like four really impressive leaves so far. Oh, my arms hurt. Okay, this wild beauty is my Philodendron Crassinervium. And it is such a unique plant. I'm absolutely obsessed with it. I realize you can't really see it over there because it's so dark compared to over here. So we're just gonna stick over here. So it again, it has really long lance-shaped leaves, which we know my favorite. And it has like a really sticky uh, residue on it. And this is to, it's a symbiotic relationship with ants is what I have learned from you guys and the internet. So thank you for educating me. You can see here that it doubles as a fungus snap trap, which I always appreciate. <laughs> but this is what it looks like when a new leaf comes out. When a new leaf comes out, it just comes out as a spike and then it slowly unfurls into this, which is just so cool. It's such a unique plant and I feel so cool that I have it. I've never really seen anybody else have this plant. You can find them online and definitely buy them. They're super cool. You can have them growing as a crawler or you can have them growing as a climber. I'm probably going to have mine growing as a climber and this one will definitely be moved out to the greenhouse once it's finished because I just wanna see it grow to its full potential on like a really big stick and just see it get really really big. <laughs> I'm just really excited about it. Okay, we all knew it was coming. It is time to look at my massive Monstera Deliciosa. It is really hard to see it fully, but you guys have seen this plant before 
um, on my channel and you've also, you know what this plant looks like. So I'm just gonna show you like from the best angles that I can. This is a beautiful Monstera Deliciosa. It's huge. These plants get very big. She's a bit thirsty right now. So just ignore that. She's the only one that didn't get water yesterday. But this is a plant that I'm actually going to be relocating out of this room just because I feel like there's only room enough for one huge imposing plant. And so she has got to go. We're gonna be bringing her up to my bedroom eventually and hopefully retraining all of the leaves to face one direction and hopefully like perk up a little bit because right now the light source is behind it. And so it just is a little confused. And honestly, it looks terrible. So she needs a bit of a makeover but this is my Monstera Deliciosa. We are going to start on the wall, beginning with my Hoya Compacta Variegata. This is a plant that is just an absolute showstopper. Again, a favorite plant. I think we're up to number four now in my favorite plants. This one just truly, truly is so beautiful and long. Look at how long these stems are. I mean, it just, it goes all the way down here. It is very long and it's just crazy because when I bought it, it was barely cascading out of the pot. Truly, it was just like a, a six inch pot barely coming out and now we have an eight inch pot fully spilling out. We'll probably need to be repotted sometime soon and it is going to outgrow the wall because I can't do anything bigger than an eight inch pot on this wall comfortably so i will have to do probably like a macrame hanger and put it possibly in that spot but i really like having it in this this like awesome south window exposure spot because i think that is the thing that has made this plant grow so insanely well because i've always had it right here so i think maybe i'll get a little hanger that i can hang from the ceiling right there so that it can stay in this spot because i truly would be so sad to not have this plant here Anyway, point is, it is a constant bloomer. She is the reason why I know what Hoya Carnosa blooms smell like. They smell like Tootsie Rolls or chocolate, if you didn't know. They're so beautiful. They're like a really big, beautiful pink puff of color, and it's just the greatest thing in the world. It has really cute, crinkly leaves, and it's just a plant that I absolutely treasure, and I would save it in a fire. To be honest, this is probably one that I would absolutely run into a burning building to save. <laughs> okay, next to that, we have some Ripsalis mistletoe, which again, I don't want to spend a lot of time on this because it's not impressive and I know that. So I have tried this plant again and it doesn't like me. I don't like it. Most of the time it ends up looking like this and it doesn't last very long in my house, but I tried and I failed. And usually I give plants three tries before I decide I don't wanna do it anymore, but it's just so unique and cool. I really hoped that this time would be the time, but I just don't think that I can keep up with the watering that it needs. I think it needs to be watered a lot more often than the rest of the plants here and it just throws me off. So we'll see how long this one lasts. <laughs> also, I love this like motif right here, or not motif, but like this little view of this beautiful plant and then this beautiful Beautiful plant and this like the textures here amazing unmatched and also with this that's a beautiful image <laughs> okay we've got a Deschidia ovata here and this is a plant where I'm like always wondering if it's gonna die but somehow it's it's stuck around and it's been fine and it even has like new growth so we're just gonna like not question it <laughs> But I got this one when I was in Indianapolis and I did have a small piece of it. I think this was the small piece that I already had. I actually don't remember, but I potted it up together with the one that I purchased when I was in Indianapolis. And I just think it's a lovely plant. It has really cute little blooms. As you can see here, it's very similar to a Hoya. They are related, Deschidia and Ovada. Deschidia and Hoya are related, so that makes sense that the blooms sort of remind me of a Hoya bloom, and I just think it's super cute. Moving on to this silver, oh gosh, what is this called? It's like a, oh, a Syndapsis Moonlight. Syndapsis, yeah, Syndapsis Moonlight, and it doesn't like me, and I don't like it. It's just one of those plants where I'm just sort of waiting around for it to die. It'll happen eventually, 
and I'm not gonna be too sad, but I mean, it does make me sad because I would like to love this plant because I love like the silvery green leaves, but it just hasn't enjoyed my presence. And I think that I let it dry out a bit too much between waterings and it doesn't like that. So either I change my ways or it's not gonna make it. And I don't know what's gonna happen. <laughs> Stay tuned. Okay, we've got a Syndopsis pictus, which is very beautiful. I love this plant. It really needs something to climb though because the leaves are just getting smaller and smaller. And I did water it yesterday, so nobody come for me. It just is still taking time to unfurl its leaves. I promise, I watered it yesterday. <laughs> But yeah, she's really cute. And I've never actually had one of these besides this one. I had a Silvery Ann and I have an Exotica up there, um, but I've never had a Pictus, just the plain Pictus. And I think it's so cute. I really love it. Okay, we're going to frame out this one with the ladder. Sorry, I just don't wanna move the ladder for this one because I'd have to move another plant. <laughs> But this is a green Hoya compacta, so it's not variegated, it's just a green one. And this one I grew from an even smaller plant than the one over close to the south window. And it is just absolutely beautiful. It is so cute. I love this plant. I love that it is just like so simple. The Carnosa plants, like Hoya Carnosa is just so easy. And I love all of the Carnosa hybrids. This one has bloomed before, as you can see from that bloom spike. And I feel like, yeah, over here, we've got another bloom spike over here. So it hasn't bloomed in a while and it hasn't put out new growth in a while, but I think that this section right here, this is a new situation. So hopefully we'll get some new growth out of that. Um, but that seems to be the only active growth point. We don't really have anything over here as of right now, but she's really cute and makes a really great statement on this wall. Now, speaking of wall statements, I think that this Hoya Wayetii really says a lot. It's so beautiful. This one has also bloomed for me, but it has been a long time. It bloomed off of this right here. You can see that on my finger. And it hasn't really put out a ton of growth. Ooh, why is it wiggling like that? These are not supposed to wiggle like that. There we go. By the way, for anybody who doesn't know how these work, they are all hung up on these hooks right here. And because this terracotta has a lip, it just hooks on to the lip of the pot. Can you see where it's hooked on? That is how it stays. It's sort of like a balancing act. But it works really well, and I have to say, I have never had a plant fall if I had it latched on correctly. One time I didn't latch it on correctly, and it did fall, but that was one time, and I've never done it again. <laughs> So trust that this is a great solution if you want like hanging plants. I have a bunch of empty ones up here that I haven't filled yet because I don't wanna just buy plants to fill this up. I haven't really had a need to buy plants. So I'm not going to just like go out and buy a bunch of random things just to fill the wall. So I do have an empty row, which probably does look kind of silly, but I will eventually have plants on there. <laughs> okay, next up we have got my philodendron micans, and it is this really beautiful velvety leaf plant, and it's a trailer or it's a climber. I would really also like to see this plant climbing. I feel like it would look so cool, but it has started to put out this really beautiful trailing piece, which just looks so nice in contrast with the linearis next to it. I really like it. This is one of my Okay, I was about to say it's one of my favorite plants, but if we're looking at the other plants on the, my scale of favorites, this one doesn't make the cut, but it is a plant that I genuinely enjoy <laughs> quite a bit. I just really love that the leaves have this like silky velvety quality and the dark color is just to die for. It is so beautiful. It makes such a wonderful contrast to plants like the Wayetii, which are like very light green. And even this one right here, this neon philodendron, next to the heterosseum micans. The micans just looks so cool. Look at that contrast. I love it. Okay, this one earned a spot as one of my favorites and I'm gonna say that confidently. So I think now we're up to number five of my favorite houseplants, <laughs> which I think is good considering how many I've actually gone through so far. Anyway, this is a linearis and it is very, very long. I've had this plant for many years. I think I bought this in 2019. And I originally bought it off of Plantarina when she started selling plants. This was one of the ones that I had my eye on because I hadn't seen anybody selling Linearis 
as full as she was. I really wanted this plant to be in the background of my videos and so that's why I moved it over here, but I feel like it's not as happy and it's probably going to get moved back further towards the window, which like I'm a little sad about because I liked having it in the background, but it's more important that the plant is happy and something like this is really happy over here because it doesn't need as much light, but this probably does. I would say Hoya need a lot of light and it wasn't getting that. So we're gonna move her eventually. But if you guys didn't know, Hoya linearis are fuzzy and they're really soft and they're just like so fun to hold and they remind me of hair and I just love it. It's probably one of my favorite Hoya in general besides the Carnosa compacta. It's just so funky and unique and if it ever bloomed for me, I think that I would drop dead. Like that is truly goals. I, I did see something that looked, oh no, that's just like a new growth thing. I thought maybe that was a peduncle. It's not, <laughs> but yeah, she's beautiful. And she was a little mad at me because I went a little too long between waterings. So she's kind of like dropping leaves and dropped actually like an entire stem. And I was like, oh no, need to get my butt in gear. I feel like also it being moved from brighter light has caused that too. So we need to make some changes so that nothing else falls off. Okay, this beautiful pothos, or not pothos, this is a philodendron. This beautiful philodendron is a neon philodendron. And again, I watered it yesterday, but it still looks a little sad. So just humor me in this. She normally looks very lovely. And I got this one from a local nursery, Vintage Hill. I really love Vintage Hill. And I saw this plant like maybe three separate times when I visited them and I never bought it. And then finally I said, you know what, Becca, you have been looking at this plant for a long time and you've wanted it every single time you've come. So I think it's time. And I did it and I'm really happy. I have no regrets. This is a macrame hanger that I made and it's very beautiful and I love making macrame. I think it's so much fun. I would really like to have more macrame hanging up around the house, but there's just not a ton of places for me to do that. So this is a really fun spot to have it. And this hook was actually here when we moved in and it's been pretty solid for my plants. I really enjoy it. Next up, we've gone one level up. This is a Hoya Compacta Manaloa, which means that it is a reverse variegated compacta. You can see here kind of what the vibe is. It's very beautiful. I got this from a friend in St. Louis and they split theirs up and gave me half and it's very, very beautiful. We did a sort of trade situation and it took a little while for it to get like rooted and established, but once it did, it just started cooking and I'm really excited for it. This pot is from Front Range Clay. It's very beautiful, I love it. And it's perfect for hanging plants on this hook thing while also looking very cool. Up next, we have a Hoya Retusa, which I got from Adam. And it's kind of long, not very long, but it's definitely bigger than when I first got it. So that's exciting. <laughs> it's in a probably three inch pot and um, it is barely hanging on with the hook, but the hook is holding it. So we're gonna count it as a win. I don't have much to say about this one, but it does periodically bloom and it tastes really good when it does bloom because it has like really yummy sweet nectar on it. So if you ever see your Hoyas blooming, don't be afraid to tap on that flower if there's any sap and give it a taste. Well, it's not sap, it's actually nectar. <laughs> it's very sweet and delicious. Okay, we have my Ripsalis Paradoxa. Now this is one that I also very recently updated on. So when I first got it, it was pretty small. It was sitting in a probably two inch pot and now it's in a three and a half, four inch pot. And it probably could stand to be repotted pretty soon, but it's very cute. I love that the vines, I was about to say leaves, but there's not really leaves on this, but I love that the vines are a sort of like chain link look, like they just are very unique and I quite enjoy it. I especially love when this plant gets big. Like I see big ones at my local nurseries now and I'm kind of wanting and tempted to get a big one, but I'm just gonna leave it at this for now and hope that it gets big pretty soon. <laughs> Okay, this is a variegated Hoya Wayetii, and this is another one that I got from Adam many years ago. And it, I mean, you'd think I've had it for a while, it would be bigger, but it, there has been some new growth recently. Um, I'm not really gonna, I think maybe this leaf is new, and maybe this leaf is new over here. But yeah, it's it's been a slow grower, but I'm sure that if it was in higher light or just like in a better situation in general, it would be different. But I think it's cute and it will eventually be 
a bigger plant, but I'm fine with it being how it is now. Okay, here is my Hoya Shepardii. I've got a lot of Hoya up here, like a lot of small Hoya. So this one I got, don't, just ignore this label here, but I got this one from Nicole and I really want to check it for flat mites because I'm suspicious that it has flat mites, not because it came from Nicole, <laughs> But just because it hasn't been really growing like it put out this Situation like you can see this is a long stem and that right here actually kind of looks like a peduncle Anyway, it hasn't put out any leaves on it and I am suspicious that maybe it has flat mites I don't know Maybe it's just putting out this long runner and then it's gonna fill up with leaves because Hoya do sometimes do that I'm not sure, but for now it has these like long green bean leaves and it's very cute, but it just hasn't really done a ton yet. So hopefully soon it will. This one is a Hoya polyneura and half of it was a plant that I purchased from an online seller and it was not a good experience. Half of it I bought from a local nursery in Kansas and it was a better experience, but I think that this Hoya is just like really unhappy. It feels like very thin and sometimes when that happens, I will unpot the plant and put it in water for a while and then it does better. But I think that I'm on the verge of killing this, to be honest with you guys. It just has not been super happy. I feel like I need to take it out of terracotta. It just does not like to dry out, and a lot of my other plants do. And so again, with the Ripsalis situation over here, it's just been kind of hard to take care of it and give it what it wants because the, the needs are different from the plants around it. So I might need to move this or put it in water for a while so that it can regain some leaf strength. Okay, this is another QT plant. This is my variegated string of heart, and it has gotten pretty long. I'm really loving this plant lately. It is in this pot by Front Range Clay, and I think that this like tiered pot is so cute. I do get nervous that it's gonna fall off of the clip, but it has been fine so far, and I think that in you know all things considered, if this one is holding on, then I think this one will too. So yeah, I got this from Vintage Hill. I think it was like 20 bucks and I'm really happy with it. It was much smaller when I first bought it. And so I'm happy that it is finally growing. Now this situation here is one of my oldest plants. This, this is actually a group of cuttings that in my very early days of owning house plants, I stole them from someone that I was house sitting for which is a sad thing to admit. I really don't like that I did that because, well, at the time I didn't know that that was like not cool, but now I do know. Uh, the plant was huge, so I really doubt that they noticed, but still, it weighs on my conscience sometimes. Anyway, I always like to be transparent about that type of stuff because we're all just learning, and that was a big learning experience for me. So I do still have it. It's about the same size as when I first got it, and maybe that's karma being like, hey, you stole this, so it's not gonna grow, like ever. <laughs> but it's really beautiful, and um, I quite enjoy having it here next to all of these other lovely plants. Also up here, I've got a spider plant. Spider plants are some of my favorite staple plants to have around the house. They are very easy to take care of, and I love that they have little baby spiderettes that they put out. It's just like a really nice visual interest. This one is variegated, so you can see that there is some white in the leaves, and this plant is actually pretty small, but it already has put off like five babies. So I would consider that a big win. It's very beautiful, and I kind of keep it over on this side because I don't usually bring the ladder over here, so I don't really have to worry about crushing those babies. On the other side of that is a green string of hearts, and it's really not exciting, and I'm trying to let it die if I'm being completely honest, so I'm not gonna show that one. <laughs> All right, we are really flying high up here on the ladder. I don't usually go above this step because I get nervous. There's like nothing to hold on to up here if I go up any higher. So that's, there's a little bit of realness, but I can really easily reach these plants so I don't have to go up any higher. Anyway. We're gonna do a little bit of a balancing act to get a good shot of this. This is a Begonia maculata, and it's very, very lovely. It has long, skinny leaves, and they have beautiful polka dots. This is another cane begonia, and I really love cane begonia. I just think that they are so lovely. This one has had, um, it's, it's definitely looked better in the past. <laughs> 
I think it's not getting as much water as it needs as frequently as it needs. Um, and that's something that I'm working on just fixing within myself because I'm noticing that that is a problem that I have is keeping up with watering frequency because I just like to let the plants dry out, you know? But not every plant likes that. Specifically, begonia do not like that. Okay, this right here is a fern leaf cactus and it is really nice. I really like looking at it from below because it just has the coolest leaves. I mean, look at these. They're like serrated. They actually smell nice too. Like they kind of have a floral scent if you've never had one of these. It was a big surprise for me when I opened the box and I was like, what smells like flowers? And it turns out it was my fern leaf cactus. This is what it looks like from below. And I just find it very jungly and fun. And it's just cute. I like it. It's a great grower. This is another one of my first house plants I ever had. Also from a cutting that I took without permission from someone I was house sitting for. These people I was house sitting for were my friends though. So like, okay, it's not like that big of a deal, but still I should have asked. <laughs> anyway, um, look at how lovely. It is so pretty. And I grew this from four leaves. I did at one point install another like set of leaves in this plant, like I potted them together. So this side of the plant and this like long piece is more of that original plant. And then this side, which looks like probably much better, is the new installment. <laughs> I don't exactly remember what kind of Hoya this is, but it is one of those Hoya that I have and it is a green plant that takes up space and I don't have to worry about it. And that is why I like it. I don't really like it for anything else. It's just kind of plain and boring, but it is beautiful and it, it it's a green spot. You know what I mean? There's just some plants that are gonna be showstoppers like this one. And then there's gonna be plants that just take up a green space and that's this one. And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Definitely have plants like this in your collection if you want to have a large collection because it helps to have low maintenance plants. Um, although this one does need to be dusted. But it helps to have low maintenance plants that are just like a green spot so that plants like this and plants like this <laughs> can shine. So speaking of this plant, this is a philodendron brantianum and I love this plant so much. It's one of those that I don't know how it'll do longevity wise in my collection but I do love having it. And I have considered bringing it down from up here because you just can't really see it very well up here. Um, I'm thinking about just like putting a bunch of pothos up here, honestly, because these plants are a lot harder to get to and I really want them to be treated a little bit better. And with something like a pothos, like I don't really have to worry about it as much. But anyway, they're really pretty. Like again, with the gray, green vibe. I just love the pale green. Um, the variegation on these is so cool. I just love the way that they look. They're very silvery and it's been a really good plant for me so far. Okay, this next plant is again another one of those placeholder plants. This is a Monstera adansonii. Don't have much to say about it besides it's, it's nice that it is taking up space up here. Um, it's pretty unremarkable otherwise, but I'm happy that I have it and moving on. <laughs> this is a Cissus quadrangularis. It's a very cool plant. This is related to the grape actually. And you can see that it has these like segmented growth pieces. It puts out these little hairs that grab onto things so that it can climb, which is really cool. And recently I have been taking much better care of this. So it is actually growing new pieces and these little leaves are really cute. So there is my sister's quadrangularis living her best life, starting to trail again. I'm so happy for it. This is the old growth. <laughs> It is uh, pretty beat up as compared to the new growth. So we're happy about that. All right, the last two plants in this room. Wow, that was a doozy. If you're still with me, say hey. This one right here is a dragon bone cactus, also known as the Euphorbia lacte. And it is a white cactus, a light green and white cactus. Um, actually, it's not a cactus. It is a Euphorbia, forgive me. Nobody come for me in the comments. <laughs> anyway, it is really, really cool. This is probably one of the coolest plants in my collection. Not a 
favorite, but it is very cool. Like I hope to have this plant for as long as I possibly can, which it's just now getting in the groove of living in this new place because it was very difficult to move. I was so freaking stressed out about this plant. I can't even begin to tell you. It lost a lot of arms in the move. We have like this area right here that's pretty empty. But up here, we're still kind of cooking with the arms. And when I bought it, it was maybe like this tall. I don't really remember. It was pretty tall when I bought it, but it has grown at least a couple of inches. Hopefully it will grow more because this is going to be moving into the greenhouse. So it will have humidity, it will have light, and it'll be just much happier. Um, it's been kind of hard to find a place for it in this house, I'll be honest, because it needs a lot of light but also it needs to be in a place where it's not gonna like poke people, which next to the back door is not a good place for it, but it needed a place and that's where it is right now. So it's sort of one of those plants that um, <laughs> I love having, but it's kind of stressful because I want to keep it happy and keep it in a place where it's gonna be thriving and it's just hard to find a place like that in my home. So I'm excited to have the greenhouse, which will be an opportunity for it to live its best life. <laughs> Okay, and the last plant in this room is a little hard to see. It sits on top of our shoe rack, so there's lots of shoes. Sorry about that. We live in the Midwest. It's wet, it's dirty. We also live on property, so we have a shoe rack. No shoes in the house, people. Anyway, this is a philodendron Brazil, and it is really, really cool. It was actually up on my balcony up there for a while. I have a plant that lives up there. I'm watering it right now as to not embarrass myself with it looking bad, but I need to take this one down. I'm already embarrassing myself. <laughs> That's a pothos that died probably like a year ago and I haven't taken it down. So we will be visiting that part of the house later. The Philodendron Brazil was actually one of the first house plants that I bought for myself. It wasn't this one, it was a different one, but it's been a really great plant for me. It just kind of has been moved around a little bit in my house and this is where I put it this week. I really do like it here on top of this stand. I feel like it kind of completes this area. I never really know what to do with the top of this um, cane, shoe rack situation. By the way, I got this at an antique store, so it's not something that I can link, but it's really great and I love having it. It's it's a beautiful shoe rack. If I have to have a shoe rack, I want it to at least look nice. And I think that this does it. So anyway, <laughs> back to the Brazil. I really don't have much else to say about it besides it's a really great plant. If you're looking for something simple and easy, definitely suggest this one. It's like an elevated pothos. It's great. The next area we're going to be looking at is my Ikea cabinet. This is the Ikea Millsbow greenhouse cabinet. And I'm really excited to show you everything that's going on in here. It's a lot of anthurium and plants that I am propagating. So let's get started. I'm going to first tell you a little bit about the products that I have in here. So first of all, I have two of these little fans and that helps with the air circulation. So I've got one on the top section and one on the bottom section. They run 24 seven and it's all operated through this app because I have a smart plug. So basically with this, as long as I'm connected to the same internet that the plug is connected to, and I'm able to control that with these two controls here. So we have one fan and the other fan, and I'm just going to have them turned off for the duration of this video because it's kind of loud, but you can see that I have this one on a timer. So it turns off every day at 7 p.m. and it turns back on at 5 a.m. And this just really helps automate everything so that I never have to worry about remembering to turn on the grow light. This is what the smart plug looks like. And yeah, it's really nice and compact, but I actually don't think that they sell this specific size anymore. So I'm gonna have to link a little bit of a bigger size, but I do really like this one. So I'm sure that the bigger one is just as good. Okay, so we're gonna start up at the top here. I have two little containers. These were little containers from the deli at the grocery store. These are great for holding up plastic containers. Like I have this nursery pot being held up by one of them, um, but they're not great with ceramic or anything more heavy. So I just have my propagation stuff in them. So I'm going to take you over to the counter and show you what's in here. Basically, it's a bunch of wet sticks of my Burley Marks Fantasy. And then I also have some Syngonium in here. My elbow Syngonium did have some 
little wet sticks and so I plopped those in here and honestly I did not know what to expect with this but I am so pleased with the results. I have no idea what to do from here but I'm assuming that I'm just going to pot them up in their own individual pots and then see how big they can get. I might actually just pot a few of them together, but some of these have like multiple leaves already, which is super exciting. And I have loved this process because I just stuck them in Wet's bag and kind of forgot about them. So I'm gonna go grab the other container. I have two of these. Now this is one where I did soil. So it's a little bit different of an environment. And the plant seems really happy in it. This is an alocasia, a variegated alocasia elephant ear. And only one of the leaves has variegation on it. So honestly, I don't really know what to do with it. It hasn't really gotten any bigger or smaller, but experiments like this will probably end up moving out to the greenhouse so that I can have like a dedicated zone for it. But yeah, that's what this one is, it's soil. But as far as everything else I've got going on here, I have some linearis propagating in water. I just emptied off like the bottom part of the stem and I put it in this water vessel. And then I have this right here. This is a Hoya elliptica, which you're gonna see the full plant a little bit later. But this piece kind of broke off, I think in shipping, or maybe I was being clumsy, I don't quite remember. But it has um, rooted down pretty nicely. As you can see, there are some pretty good roots and it's branching at the bottom and it's branching at the top. So it's pretty happy. I will be able to repot this into soil pretty soon. Next to that, I have an alocasia black velvet, which it's kind of hard to gauge the coloring on these because the lighting is a little bit strange in here. I'm trying to figure out, yeah, I guess I, yeah, you can't really see a super accurate coloring, but they're just a nice deep green color. And I think that there's a new leaf that's gonna be coming out. Oh yeah, you can see there's a little spike here. I do get fungus gnats in here periodically, so you're gonna see some yellow sticky traps. That's just a little bit of greenhouse realness or just plant care realness. And then up here, I have a little gloriosum baby that I just separated, so it's looking a little rough. I have high hopes, but who knows? <laughs> and then another little experiment plant is this. This is a melanochrysum, which was a tip cutting off of my original melanochrysum that turned into a big long runner, and I think this was at the end of it or something like that. And it was actually sitting in the soil container for quite a while and it put off some pretty nice roots. And so I decided to pot it up on its own and put it on this miniature pole and we'll see how it goes. It's always been this like really orange color. I think that just means that it's getting a lot of light. It was a lot closer to the grow light in here. And by the way, these grow lights are pretty nice. They're very bright. I don't really know much about the specs on them, but I will have them linked down below if you're interested. They're really nice track lights and I have them just positioned up here with some command strips. So that was the easiest way for me, but I've also seen people use magnets or something similar to that. Down to the second shelf of the greenhouse cabinet, we're going to start off with the Alocasia Maharani. This plant is so cool. And honestly, for a while, I wasn't sure if it was going to make it and be happy <laughs> in my collection, but it has had a turnaround and it's looking really nice. This is the most recent leaf, so it's pretty cool. I love that these leaves kind of look like shields. And when you come up really close, you can see just how much detail is on these leaves. There's so many tiny miniature little bumps and ridges. It's really, really cool to see. This right here is a Hoya Velosa that I got from Nicole, and I am absolutely obsessed with this Hoya. Unfortunately, it currently has flat mites, and I'm pretty sad about that. I feel like I should wash my hands after I just touched it before I touch anything else, but um, I'm gonna keep talking about it, and then I'm gonna go wash my hands. But anyway, you can see that there is some knobby growth happening right here at the tip. That's usually a sign of flat mites because flat mites tend to attack the new growth. And so it did try to put out a new growth piece and then it ended up falling off because the mites just got to it before I really understood what was going on. But in order to get rid of those flat mites, I'm probably going to do some sulfur treatment and then also keep blasting it with water every couple of days just to get this, I don't know, this area clean. 
hopefully of as many flat mites as I can. And you wouldn't know by just looking at it right here, but it is fuzzy. I find it so interesting and unique and definitely one of my coolest Hoyas. <laughs> Next to that, I have a little Anthurium Silver Blush. This plant is a little baby off of this plant over here, and it's super cute. I wasn't sure if I would like having it separated out, but it's cute. It just makes it easier to like see how this specific pleat how this specific piece is growing. And in addition to that, I will probably end up like selling this or giving it away once it gets to the point where it is a little bit more impressive if it gets to that point ever, but it's pretty cute and it's in this super beautiful pot. Okay, this is an Anthurium crystallinum and I got this as a freebie when I purchased this plant right here from my friend Oscar, Plant That Plant many years ago and it has been through it but anyway it's in this little pot and it probably should be repotted relatively soon i'm assuming the roots are pretty developed at this point but it has three leaves and it normally holds on to at least two leaves at a time um, but this time it's held on to three which is really great and um, this is a newer leaf as you can see it's like still that nice coppery color that anthurium come out as most of the time this showstopper is a begonia brevermosa and it is the last begonia in my collection the most recent one as well it is known for its obviously very striking foliage these leaves are as neon pink as they come i mean truly this color is out of this world I freaking love this begonia so much and I bought it from Tennessee Tropicals and for a while it was not doing too well so I kind of put it in the cabinet as a way to help it out and it has really enjoyed living in the cabinet and I'm thrilled by that because this is just such a cool plant. You can see that it has like little hairs on it and that's just like another funny unique thing about this specific begonia. Other begonias definitely have that but this one has it and it just makes me really happy because it's so cute. Okay, as I mentioned earlier, this is an Anthurium Silver Blush. This was from my first import order ever, and it is looking just okay. It has put a lot of focus on putting out babies, so we do have a couple really beautiful leaves, but for some reason, most of its efforts have been put into branching and creating pups which I guess is fine, but I really wish they would focus on the central plant, which is, I guess, part of the reason why I wanted to remove this um, so that it can just focus on itself. <laughs> she just keeps wanting to put out babies and she needs to she needs to calm down, you know? So anyway, not much to say about her besides she's doing pretty well, all things considered. I think that this is an Anthurium doriaki, but it has really big leaves. Look at how big these are. Like compared to my hand, as compared to my other you know, anthurium leaves, they're pretty big and very round and just like puffy. They kind of look like a pillow. So they're really, really nice. This is the newest leaf here. Let me see if I can sort of shuffle it on top. It's looking very beautiful. And this plant currently has four leaves. So you can see these two, and then there's two more in the back there that aren't looking as good as these front ones. So I'm pretty proud of her for holding on to four leaves and no, and not having any imperfections in this one. This leaf looks super good. It does look a little bit more crinkly than usual, but I'm not thinking that that's too strange because they do tend to have some ridges on them. Next up, we've got my Anthurium forgetii. I am trying very hard to force the plant to keep this leaf upwards because it keeps wanting to put the leaves down like a pendant. <laughs> There's an, a type of anthurium called a pendant anthurium and basically the leaves are kind of like hanging plants, like they just like hang down. So we've got two other leaves on this forgetii, but they're kind of hard to bring up. This one's a little crusty. This one looks a lot better, um, still a little crusty, but anyway, this plant has always been kind of fickle with me, but this new leaf does look pretty good. And like I said, I'm trying to train it to like stand up. And I think that it is, like I kind of rested it on this Doriaki leaf in the meantime, and it looks like it's standing up pretty nicely. So yeah, not much to say about that one besides she's doing her best and so am I. 
Okay, down in the lower part of the cabinet, this is sort of our, well, there's a lot of plants in this area that are my workspace, like up there, I have a lot of like in the progress plants. This is one of them. This is a Burley Marks fantasy. And this is the plant that all of those wet sticks came off of. And this was originally given to me by Adam. And I have been trying my darndest to keep it happy, but it has been very difficult. So I just ended up chopping it up because it put out a bunch of runners. This was the very bottom of the plant and I wasn't exactly expecting it to do anything, but it did put out this little leaf which is pretty cool. And I'm hoping for the best. <laughs> Truly just kind of hoping that something exciting happens. But Burley Marks Fantasies are very beautiful plants. I just wish that this one liked me more. Okay, next up we have a Syngonium Chia Pence and it just put out this leaf. It is so beautiful. Like these types of Syngonium, just like the Frosted Heart. I did not know about these a couple years ago and I think that they are so cool. It honestly reminds me a lot of an anthurium, but it's very like rubbery and thick, kind of like a Monstera deliciosa. So not too similar to anthurium in any other way besides this leaf shape is very remnant of an anthurium. Anyway, it has a couple of really nice leaves. And the funny thing about this plant is that it was sent to me by a subscriber very kindly, and they were DMing me the tracking information and I did not see their DMs. So this plant actually sat in my PO box for a couple of weeks and I had no idea and I felt horrible because we had been planning this for a long time. I was so anxious, but I went to the post office to pick it up and I like opened the box while I was walking to my car and I saw green and I knew that it was gonna be okay. So that just goes to show how hardy this plant is and how well it was packaged. This new leaf is absolutely beautiful and i would really like to get this on a pole or a, a piece of wood as soon as possible i for myself i guess i wanted to have her in the cabinet for a little bit just to make sure that she was getting like super like hospital conditions you know it's really humid in here we've got the light right here i just wanted to make sure that she was going to be okay and she's definitely proven herself that leaf is amazing okay down here kind of in the shadows we have another burly marks fantasy this was the top cutting off of this when i chopped it up and i'm just going to tilt it so you can kind of see with the lighting but as you can see i decided to put it on a pole i wasn't sure <laughs> like what would happen and i definitely need a longer stick because if it actually does attach it's already at the top so it definitely needs something taller but it put out this leaf like right at the top there and it looks pretty cute so i'm interested to see what happens here but that was something that i just recently did so i don't really have any big results to share about just yet. Okay, now we have the crowned jewel of my greenhouse cabinet. I actually just would love to have this be the only plant down here so that it could be like up front and center and like nothing else is in the way. But this is my Anthurium clarinervium and it is by far another favorite plant. I think we are up to six now. <laughs> it's just so lovely and has it has had like the biggest transformation it went from having root rot to, you know, repotting it in De La Tanks, and it has never been happier. I just absolutely love this plant. It originally came from Sweden in an order from Plant That Plant, and the leaves that it came with initially were massive. Like, I mean massive. And I was so shocked. They were like bigger than my face. And for a really long time, it was super unhappy, so it was putting out um, if it even did put out leaves, I was lucky for them to be about this size. Now, please just ignore how dirty the glass is in the greenhouse cabinet, <laughs> but we don't have a ton of the original leaves anymore because the plant has grown so much. Let me show you the most recent leaf it put out. Like whenever I look at it, I honestly think of dinner plate because it is that big. Look at that leaf. It is huge. My hand, in comparison, it's bigger than my hand. It's amazing. And it's been putting out these really big leaves lately. And I'm just so tickled because before that, you know, we were getting stuff like this. And I was really happy with this. I was very satisfied with that. And then we got some big ones coming in. And that just means that the plant is really happy. And it's also blooming a lot. So we actually have two blooms happening 
right now. One that is still in the works and then one that I actually pollinated. And I'm trying to be like so careful with this. This is so hard to film with one hand. You can see that it has like some black dots on it. That I hope will mature into berries. But as you can see, this flower has been pollinated. I just saved some pollen from this plant from a previous bloom. And then I used that pollen to pollinate this flower once it started getting like the sap, the sticky sap on it. So super exciting. I'll definitely keep you guys updated on this process. Like if anything even comes of it, I'm so stoked. But again, I've been like guarding this, this uh, flower with my life. <laughs> because they snap off so easily. So I'm just trying to be so careful with it. Okay, starting on kitchen plants, I've got a jade pothos up here. It's seriously nothing special. It just sits on my fridge among our like mess. I'm a little embarrassed about our fridge mess, but like we keep the front clean <laughs> and the side is where we put all our stuff. So anyway, I've had this for a really long time and it's just um, honestly not looking great, but it never really has. Like it hasn't looked great in a while. It needs to be cut like right here and then like replanted in, but you can see there's like new growth coming in up here. Um, well, this has been coming in for a long time, but it's not getting a ton of light, so it doesn't really do anything, but it's just nice to have a little pop of green in this area. I find it kind of nice. Okay, so we've got the plants over in front of my kitchen window. For reference, this is a south window, but it is covered by this huge oak tree, as you can see. So in the summertime, really not a ton of light is coming through, but in the wintertime, it can get quite strong. So as you can see, there are like a few flecks of like a little bit more intense light, but for the most part, it's very dappled. So we're gonna start over here. This is a variegated Epipremnum pinnatum, and honestly, it hasn't put out a ton of variegation. This is a plant that's completely separate from the plant in the plant room, but I would like to pot them together next time I do a repot on that, which will be very soon. So those will be combined. I don't really like having duplicates in the house, especially when they're this small. I like to combine them so that I only have to worry about one of each type of plant. This right here is a Tephrocactus geometricans, and it is so cool. I love this thing. Let me bring it over here so you can see it a little bit better, but it's just such a funky little cactus, and it has put out these two pieces in my care. This one happened when it was in Tucson, and this one is obviously happening right now. You can just see the shape difference between these two. So the middle one was when it wasn't getting a ton of light, so it kind of grew in skinny. And then this one on top has been getting lots of light, and so it's growing in much more of a ball shape like it's supposed to. As you can see down here, this is like a perfect sphere. And so it's living in this south window again, but before that it was living in another south window and another part of the house, but I brought it over here so that I could water it more often and it's been really happy. Okay, next plant up, we have my Stromanth Magic Star. She is a little thirsty, so just ignore the fact that she's kind of curling in, but if there's anyone out there who has this plant or wants this plant, this is what it looks like when it needs water. Or even, it probably should have had water like two days ago before it got to this point, to be honest with you. This is the one and only Stromanth in my collection. Again, I can't have too many of these high maintenance plants because I just don't have the capacity for it. But this one I have found to be pretty easy. We did get spider mites pretty early on in its time with me, but we did overcome that and we put out, we, I keep saying we, I did not put out these leaves. She did all the work. I just provided the water and snacks, okay? But anyway, she has like a really beautiful speckly design. And then of course we've got the very bright purple underside of these leaves. Some of them have a bit more of like a pink on them. So this one is just such a fun plant. Oh, this one has like a pretty beautiful stripe on it. I really like this plant. I think it's super fun and honestly pretty low maintenance despite the fact that it is a stromantic and a part of the Marantissiae family. I have it potted in De La Tanks and Terracotta, which should be a bad combination, but honestly, it's been pretty happy. And down below that, we have a Euphorbia obesa. 
This is such a fun plant. This is the baseball plant, I think its nickname is. And these get really, really tall. They just become like a cylinder that goes up. And I find them to be really fun. They have really cool like markings on the sides and it is a euphorbia, so it's not a cactus. So this one's actually related to the white ghost euphorbia, the lactate that I showed you earlier. These are in the same family and I just find them to be really cool. It is actually in the process of growing. It is a little skinny on the top, which just means that it wasn't getting enough light. So hopefully as winter goes on, the this window will get brighter and it'll be much happier. But I am also considering bringing this one out to the greenhouse so that it can get optimal light out there but we'll just have to see. It is potted in de la tanks, although for cactus, euphorbia, succulents, I do typically put them in the tanks, green stuff, cactus mix, but I just happen to have this one on hand right off the cuff, so that's what I put it in. This right here is my Hoya obovata splash, who also has flat mites. So we've got lots of areas where leaves were trying to grow and then they ended up falling off. I thought it was a me thing, but it turns out it was just sick. So you can see these bottom leaves is what it's supposed to look like. So it is going to be a very beautiful plant eventually once we get this flat mite situation under control. But I have been blasting it with water in the meantime and it has held on to new growth. For example, this leaf right here has already been affected by the mites. Um, you can see that it's just like kind of wrinkly and crinkly. This one is also another example of that. And so is this one. But I am pretty confident that we'll be able to get it under control and eventually I will probably take a cutting like down here and down here and then pot these or propagate these pieces and then pot them up separately or probably just end up potting them in the same pot. Honestly, that's probably more likely what I'm going to do. But look at this leaf absolutely stunning i love it it's in this really beautiful desert pot by joanna hennigan pottery now here is my other hoya elliptica and it's doing pretty well honestly the piece in the greenhouse cabinet looks like it's doing much better this one feels kind of thin and frail so we're gonna work on giving her water a little bit more often and see if that helps out but i just really love the veins on this plant you can see it just has such cool texture on those leaves just you can see it looks like it has like a 12 pack. I just, I think it's so beautiful. Okay, next up we have a plant that used to be one of my favorite plants. It has fallen from grace. <laughs> so this is my Philodendron Mamii and it is a beautiful plant, don't get me wrong, but she has really given me a run for my money. So ignore the dust, sorry. But basically when I was about to move out here to Missouri, I noticed that it was looking really droopy, wasn't looking too good, and then I found out that it had root rot, which was probably the worst time for a plant to get root rot is right before you move. So I basically took off all the rotted roots and I put it in water to rehab, and then it just did not fare well on the move. Obviously, that's a really vulnerable place to be when you're about to move across the country. The plant, not me, but also me. And it ended up turning into a wet stick, and I brought it back from a wet stick. It was my first time actually being successful with wet stick propagation. And as you can see, this is all the original stem and then we have some new stuff going on. It does look like it's going to be putting out a new leaf pretty soon. This piece looks a little bit thicker than usual. So I hope that means a new leaf soon because I'd love to see something fun and fresh going on over here. This one also got spider mites not too long ago and she has recovered pretty nicely. But if you haven't noticed, spider mites is pretty much the main pest that I deal with. And I've got a pretty good system for handling both of them. As long as I stay on top of it, I can get rid of them within just a few weeks and the plant is pretty good to continue on with its life. Down here, this is a plant that I've kept for far too long and I just need to get rid of it. But this is a Anthurium Ace of Spades. This is not me telling you guys to comment down below that you want it because I would honestly feel terrible giving this to somebody. I think that's why I've kept it for so long, but I did have it living in a plastic bag for a while and it was absolutely thriving in the plastic bag. But then I took it out of the bag and life has been really hard for her ever since then. And I just, I don't know what to do with it. So it was taking up real estate in the greenhouse cabinet and I decided similar to the Anthurium regale, I just don't want to give it space in there because that's like a living on the beach. <laughs> You don't want to put a plant that you don't like 
<laughs> living on the beach, you know, in my in my little Sims world. Point is, it wasn't doing its job in the cabinet. It only liked living in the bag, and I can't have it, and I can't have it living in a bag its whole life. She was banished, and she now sits here so that I can keep an eye on it. But haven't seen any new growth come out, and I'm not expecting it. And then lastly, I have a piece of a snake plant in a jar of water. And actually, look how cute it has a baby. This was given to me at a one of my book signings from a lovely follower, Tyler. Shout out to Tyler if you're watching. Um, I have been keeping this in water and it is looking super good. So I just keep it close to the sink here so I can keep an eye on that water level. I am standing on my kitchen counter to show you this shot. This is a Hoya Pubicalyx. And I've had this one for quite a while. I got this back in 2019. And it's been such a solid plant for me. I really like never worry about it ever. And it has been putting out some new growth lately, which is really cute. Sorry, it's so hard to show you this plant because we're so backlit with this window here. But you can see there's some new growth right there. This is new. Um, but I pretty much don't notice anything is going on really unless the growth is super glossy. That's how I know that there's something new going on um, because I pretty much just never worry about this plant. I would really love for it to bloom eventually, but so far we've just been getting foliage and like little pieces like this just running up and that's fine with me. Hopefully one day we will get some blooms though. And the other plant that we have up here is a Hoya obavada and this is another one that I've had for a really long time and it's quite large, but honestly it hasn't been growing much lately since I moved to this house. I think that this lighting is just not great for it. So hopefully I can move it somewhere eventually where it's getting good lighting year round. Like I've said, the winter time in this window is a really great place to be if you're a plant, but the summertime it's a bit harder. But I am really happy with this plant even so. I just love how beautiful and splashy it is. Ooh, you know what? It is actually putting out a lot of new growth now that I'm looking at it. This is new, this is new. I was kind of worried that it had flat mites if I'm honest, but this growth seems pretty healthy, so I think maybe we're clear. I will probably still treat it just in case because you never know, but so far it's looking like it's putting out some pretty nice growth and that does make me very happy. Okay, we have arrived at my under the television situation. You can see my TV is right there. It looks huge from this angle. But yeah, we're gonna look at the plants down here. These plants are growing entirely off of grow lights. Two of them are really loving it, one of them is not. I feel like that might have more to do with me than the plant, honestly. But <laughs> this is a curly spider plant. I love spider plants so much. I feel like I need to have a few more in my home because I just love them. They're kind of like a comfort plant. They remind me of my mom and they just grow so well. So as you can see, this one is actually putting off a bunch of babies, which is nice. We've got this piece over here and this one back here is a new baby acquisition. So yeah, she's just living her best life. It might actually get too big for this section. You can see that there's a grow light up there. That is a grow light from Mother. This light has been so awesome. They actually sent this out to me a couple months ago and I've had this going almost every day. Sometimes I don't remember to turn it on, but the plants look good, right? So <laughs> they're potted up in these really lovely pots I got from a local nursery and I water them probably about every two weeks. But yeah, they're just doing really well. This curly spider plant is so unique and funky. Like it just looks like a bad hair day. I love it. This is a red Maranta right next door and I feel like I need to give this plant a good wash off, like a good dusting and maybe that will help it out. But it just has not been super happy and I don't have a good track record with these plants in general. So I feel like it has more to do with me than anything like I said. So she's doing her best. We are trying, but I'm probably gonna end up replacing this with something that's a little bit more simple like a spider plant or this enjoy pothos. Which speaking of, it has been putting out these little branches since I put it here. It was a little smaller when I bought it. So just in the last couple of months, we have this piece going a little bit longer and this piece going a little bit longer. And I just think that these leaves are so striking and beautiful. I've had interesting luck with these in the past and I'm really glad that I'm doing it again. I'm trying again because the second time around is much more successful and I have to say that I just quite enjoy 
watching this one grow. I love the green and white and just how simple it is. How simple yet how intricate it is. You know what I mean? Like it's just a pothos, but at the same time, it's really cool. Okay, so we enter snake plant corner besides those two. So I guess it's um <laughs> three snake plant corner and some friends. <laughs> this is a Dracaena Bantle Sensation. It's a little bit difficult to show these because there's so many different pieces, but this is some new growth that it's been putting out and it is absolutely beautiful. I was kind of falling out of love with this plant, if I'm honest, because a lot of the leaves were looking like this. And this is a leaf that the plant has had for a really long time. And they just weren't very impressive to me. Like this isn't that exciting, but this is exciting. I got this from a sketchy seller. This was like one of the first plants I ever got in the mail. And the seller turned out to be kind of like a dangerous person which is great that they had my address. Um, <laughs> definitely make sure that you're buying from reputable, reputable people before you buy because you don't wanna be giving your address out to people who are going to make you unsafe. Um, that's pretty much the lesson that I've learned with this plant. And I've considered giving it away several times just because I feel like it just has like a weird vibe and like reminds me of that time. But then it puts out beautiful leaves like this and I feel like I can't get rid of it. So it's staying for now. Next up, we have my whale fin. This one is so fun. I love these fins. I just think they're so cute. It has put out, I think just these two since I got it when I, when I initially got it. It was like a really big pot of them and I actually split it up and like sold or gave away the extra fins that I didn't need. And then I kept this one because it was a double fin. I thought it was really cute. I really don't have a ton to say about Sansevieria slash Dracaena because they're kind of boring to be honest. That's why they live in this room because I don't really take care of the plants in here very often. So I have the drought tolerant plants in here. <laughs> so that tends to be snake plants. This is a moonlight or moonshine snake plant Dracaena. And it's really, really fun because it has these beautiful pale green leaves, which we know is a favorite of mine. And it did recently put out this pup. So it's got a little baby going on, which is really cute and exciting. This is a plant that I have really neglected. I mean, all of the plants in this room get very neglected, but somehow it has put out a baby and I just am so happy about that. It makes me feel like I want to pay more attention to it, but at the same time, it is nice just to have a plant that I don't have to worry about right here. Okay, so this plant has seen better days, I'm sure. This is a ponytail palm and it doesn't look amazing, but I have been trying to take better care of it. So I really just need to like cut off all this dead because there is some new growth coming in, you guys. There's proof <laughs> that like <laughs> I'm not completely neglecting it. Um, yeah, I just feel the need to say that all of these plants get neglected and I'm really sorry, but there's a, there's a there's a section of everybody's house where your plants are a bit neglected, right? I'm not the only one. Anyway, <laughs> I got this from Green Digs um, maybe like a year or two ago, and I think it's really cool. It's just like not that interesting to me. I kind of think that it's boring, so I end up not paying much attention to it, but the pot that it's in is really beautiful. It came in this really beautiful blue pot with this matching um, saucer, and I just think that's lovely. So yeah, I'm trying mostly kind of <laughs> this is a little watering can that i got from my friend natalie for i think my birthday a couple of years ago and i do use it sometimes but it's mostly for decoration and i think it looks really cute in this little section with these plants okay the ultimate drought tolerant i ignore it plant the zz <laughs> so yeah it's as easy it's pretty standard not too exciting but she's green she takes up green space and i'm really happy for that I think this plant is a dust monster. Like dust really gets caked on these leaves and you don't notice because I'm looking at it and I'm like, wow, she really needs a shower. So next time I water this, I'll probably take it into the shower and just like spray off all of the leaves to make sure that it is dust free, especially as we go into darker winter months where it's gonna need as many opportunities to photosynthesize as possible. But I don't know if I said, but this is a south window. It's a really big picture window and it lets in a lot of light. This one definitely brings in more light than the kitchen because there's no trees like 
obscuring. I mean, there is this willow tree, but it's like not doing great. So we don't really have to worry about that. As soon as the sun gets past the wooded area over there and into this section of the sky, there's quite a lot of light that actually comes through, but it is a cloudy day, so it's not too much today. And still, it is pretty bright. This doesn't really count for plants, but I feel like I wanna show off my fake plants. So I made a video showing how I made these, but these are fake succulents. I don't know what this is supposed to be, but it's just a fake plant. <laughs> and I have it in this little pot by Joanna Hennigan. And then this one is a string of pearls, and it's really cute. I made this one, I made all of the individual pearls from like raw felt or whatever, and it was super fun. It took a very long time, but it was really fun and rewarding, and there's just rocks at the top, but you probably could also put soil. I just thought rocks would be easy to keep all of these pieces in. Okay, now we enter my bathroom. Sorry, it's a little echoey, but I've only got one plant in here, and I figured I'd still show it to you, but this is not going to be living in here for much longer because I'm realizing that it's not doing well here, and when you realize that a plant is not doing well, it's best to move it. So this is a north window, and honestly, north windows in the Midwest are really bad. They're pretty bad in most places, but especially here where I live, it's just not strong enough, even for a Raven ZZ, such as this one. My camera is even having a hard time picking up showing this plant because it's so dark in here, especially later in the day. But anyway, there's paint on this plant. <laughs> Let me get that off, buddy. Okay. <laughs> so yes, this is a Raven ZZ. It is the ZZ, but it's really, really dark, deep green so dark that it looks black and it is so cool. This plant is actually made up of a bunch of pieces that I got from plant swaps. So usually at plant swaps, at least somebody brings a Raven ZZ cutting and I would try to get it as many times as I could and to fill up a pot because I just kind of thought it would be cute to have one plant that is completely made up of plant cuttings from swaps. So yeah, that's what this one is, and it's really cool. I would say that if you're gonna have plants in your bathroom to make sure that you're dusting it pretty often, this one is not as dirty as I thought it would be, but there's definitely some pieces that are dirtier than others because toilet paper brings off a lot of dust. I think that's what I have decided makes it so dusty in here. Like in my old bathroom, I noticed that my plants were always so dusty. And I think it has a lot to do with, with like the toilet paper lint. I don't know if it's lint necessarily, but yeah, toilet paper dust does tend to gather on plants. So if you use toilet paper, make sure that you are dusting your plants in your bathroom. Okay, now we come into my bedroom where I have this plant right here. It's fake if no one picked up on that yet. And I made this last year. It's just made out of paper from a tutorial by Corey Beth Makes. She has a book out that you can trace off the leaf and then put them all together on a vine. I basically cut out mine all the same leaf shape with a Cricut machine. And I have a video of how I did that so I linked that down below if you'd like to go look at it but this room doesn't get really any light at all so I can't really have plants in here but I still wanted the look of a plant so I made a fake one and then I told you guys that I would tell you about this Cebu Blue Pothos so this sits up here on my balcony and it is really happy because it is right next to this skylight I'm going to show you what it looks like from down below actually hung up because that's a little bit better of a view, but this is how I access it. I always get questions on how I do that. Okay, there she is, very lush and full. Beautiful, beautiful. It almost touches the added Sony eye right below it, and I think that's so fun. And yeah, I love this plant. It's very cute up there. I, I had a vision to put like a bunch of plants like that up here, but then that one died, and I don't water this one as much as I should, and so I'm kind of second guessing if I should actually do that, but let me know if you think I should. I don't know. I feel like I shouldn't. It feels a little irresponsible considering. <laughs> that anyway <laughs> okay we're outside really quickly because i have some house plants out here and this right here is a thematophyllum something i've i always forget the name but it's a thematophyllum also known as the tree philodendron or the philodendron cellum 
and it's really, really big and loving its life out here. So I actually got this from a woman. I went to a garden show last year and I saw this beautiful plant through a window in her basement and I was like, I love your philodendron. And she was like, hey, do you actually want it? Um, it, it was her son's and her son passed away and she ended up with the plant and it was just too big for her. Um, she's an older lady and it was definitely very heavy to be lugging around and taking care of. And I actually showed in a video how I repotted it and sort of rehabbed it to get it to this point. Um, it wasn't in the greatest of condition, but it definitely bounced back pretty quickly and we have lots of new leaves in the mix. This is a new one, um, although it did get broken somehow. I'm not quite sure. Maybe something to do with wind. I mean, it is kind of out here in the elements. It's really cute and it is sort of a summer home for a lot of tree frogs. As you can see here, there's a cute little tree frog. <laughs> <laughs> and then right here, not in its usual spot, it looks a little messy, I've got the hose out, sorry, but this is my philodendron, oh no, this is a ficus lyrata, a fiddle leaf fig, and it just put out this beautiful leaf. It is getting pretty close to full sun in this spot, um, especially when the sun is over here. But yeah, I bring this out every year. I've been bringing it outside every year for a couple of years now, and it has grown so much. I think when I first got it, I got it at a plant swap. It was maybe like this tall, and so clearly it is much taller now. And this point, from this point, up i believe is the growth over the last two summers so honestly it's not as many new leaves as i hoped for initially i think these three is all it's done this year it does have a couple more weeks outside here and it will be moving into the greenhouse once that is finished so it will be getting lots of lovely light but i will say i used to be absolutely terrified of fiddle leaf figs and now i am just really really happy that i have it i think they're so lovely fortunately it did experience a little bit of a sunburn but as you can see it adapted really well and this leaf came out obviously after that and it does not have a sunburn or anything like that so plants definitely do adapt when you bring them outside sometimes they might experience sunburn but they do adapt and they do overcome come it and they do get stronger for it which is really great now this plant it looks a little funny it is filling out a little bit more but this was actually my very first house plant I ever purchased so I have a little bit of sentimental attachment to it even though it does look a little funny this is a burgundy rubber tree and it obviously is known for its very very dark leaves and it has been so happy outside these last couple of summers here. As you can see, we've got a new leaf coming in and we just keep getting new leaves. This section right here looks so beautiful and I'm just really happy with it. I feel like it has had a revival of sorts. It's definitely been through a lot with me and I'm just really happy that I have it. It has come with me through, I think like four different moves, which is really sweet that I still have it. And it's a sweet little memory. And the last ficus that I have out here is this ficus ruby tanique or tanique ruby. And basically it is a really lovely variegated rubber tree. This is a newer leaf. As you can see, it still has lots of pink in it, but the leaves that it's been putting out this summer are really big. Look at how big and beautiful that leaf is. It really looks like a painting. Like somebody took watercolors and brushed on on the leaf. It's just so beautiful. This leaf is also very big and I'm just really proud of it. It has, it has taken the sun like a champ and it's definitely my easiest rubber tree. Like if you are looking into getting a ficus or a rubber tree, this one has never given me issues. Whereas this one has dropped a lot of leaves. As you can see, there's like an empty section here. And this one has also dropped a lot of leaves. It's empty section here. <laughs> but this one doesn't really have too much of that. Um, there is a little bit of an empty section. And clearly it has dropped a few, but definitely not as many as these ones over here. I just find it to be a really fun and beautiful ficus. I do also have a pretty big cactus collection and I hauled a lot of these 
back a couple of months ago when I came back from Arizona. I am planning on having a lot of cactus in my greenhouse and if you want to see my cactus collection, I basically have a haul video of my entire cactus collection on my channel. I will link the video down below if you're interested in hearing about these. I've got some other funky cactus over here. Nothing like too remarkable. Again, if you want to hear more about my cactus collection, I made a cactus collection video. Um, this one is a serious spiralis. I've got a very small saguaro cactus, and then I have a silver torch. Okay, wow. So you made it to the end of the video. You are a rock star. I honestly feel like a rock star after filming all of that and editing all of that. Truly, it has been so much fun to hang out with you and show you my complete collection. Again, it is just so special to see how these plants change from year to year. And if you look back at my old houseplant collection videos, you'll probably see a lot of the same plants, just a lot smaller. <laughs> so thank you so much for watching this video. And if you haven't already, make sure that you subscribe to my channel because if you liked my houseplant collection, you're gonna like the rest of my videos. I do a lot of videos showing how I care for these plants, just day-to-day -day life with them. I have some long-term projects like I'm building a greenhouse and I just do fun stuff like designing this plant room. It's all on this channel. So I really appreciate you watching this video and I can't wait to see you in the next one. Bye.